Well, the U.S. Supreme Court is about to take up one of the biggest religious freedom cases in decades. Do you have the right to open a public meeting with a prayer? And if so, must you find religious leaders of all faiths for said prayer, even if your town happens to be 90% Christian? Joining me now, Rob Boston. He's the director of communications for Americans United for Separation of Church and State, the organization representing the women who brought the lawsuit against their hometown, claiming they were being excluded due to their beliefs, and Jordan Lawrence. Uh, attorney for Alliance Defending Freedom. That's the organization defending the town. It's up in Greece, New York, upstate New York. And I guess the argument, let me start with you, Rob, is that even though the town is mostly Christian and they were inviting anybody from any congregation within the town to come speak, um, I, apparently there were people there who thought still, nonetheless, it was too often a, a Christian preacher. Well, first of all, there weren't they weren't inviting everybody. They were defaulting basically to the majority religion, Christianity. About 85 percent of the time they were using Christian prayers. And many times they had the sound of being almost like mini sermons. Uh, and some people said, look, you know, this is a diverse community. You have to recognize other traditions as well and stop imposing this religion through the mechanism of a town board meeting. But Jordan, it sounds like they were representing other religions. That they, There was a Jewish man who said a prayer. There That's was a right. Wiccan priestess, a Wiccan priestess who said a prayer. I mean, how, how, many, how diverse did they have to go? Well, that's right. There's no quota system for religious diversity that you have to have under the Establishment Clause. And opening public meetings with prayer is a tradition that even the authors of the Constitution practice. And I think it's enhanced when, you, when the government, like in uh, the town of Greece, allows people to come and pray according to their faith tradition. And uh, they weren't uh, trying to steer this to Christians. And there's a lot of diversity between Catholics, Baptists, and Pentecostals. And to lump them all together is to really, I think, paint a, a misleading picture that this was somehow uh, of, of a plain vanilla uh, Christian set of prayers that were being said. What of it, Rob? What was, what was the town supposed to do if it is 85 or 90 percent Christian? Do they have to go outside of Greece, New York, and find some you know, congregation or some synagogue or something other than Christian in order to comply with the Constitution? Constitution, in your view? They have options. Uh, a lot of communities just get down to business. They don't have a prayer service before their meeting. Yeah, but, but are you arguing council, that prayer is unconstitutional? Are you well, arguing the, that this, prayer if opening this, it up? If this, if this council wanted to have some sort of religious expression before their meetings, they could get together as a council and it could be as re Christian as they wanted it to be every week. But they seem to want to have some sort of public expression of their religiosity, which in our view sends the message to those who are outside that system that they're second-class citizens, that the government is a de facto Christian, and that if you don't believe in that, well, you know, you're tolerated at best, but you're not really a full member of the community. But the, the government at any level, especially the local government that's closest to the people, can never, should never, send that message. Go it's ahead, a Jordan. fundamental right of conscience that we're dealing with here. Yeah, ahead, well, Jordan. you know, this, the Supreme Court upheld in 1983 this practice, and Megan, you're well aware of this from your days at the Supreme Court covering it there. And uh, the... the uh, to say that this is something that uh, uh, that people are offended by, well, people could be offended by saying of the Pledge of Allegiance. They could be offended that uh, military veterans are being honored if they're a pacifist and say they're alienated. This concept that anybody who's offended uh, can can censor what everybody else is saying in prayer really has no end to it. And, and, and not, not we need censor, to learn to get together. Not censor. Rob, they let me just the, ask they... you quickly. Let me just ask, because I yeah, know our sure. viewers are sitting here thinking, don't we see the U.S. Congress open with a prayer? We see all sorts of public events open with a prayer. Is, is it the prayer? Is, do you object to the prayer itself? The prayer, they could use the prayer if they would just be a little bit more nonsectarian. If you look at the guidelines that the House of Representatives gives to its guest chaplains, they remind <clears> them that it's a diverse body that they don't want a prayer that attacks another tradition, that they want to be inclusive. The town of Greece needs to keep that in mind as well. They haven't been inclusive. The, the, the Jewish individual who was brought in, the pagan who was brought in, they were only brought in after our organization complained. Before then, it was basically just Christians all the time. What did, well, Rob, what your did, the, organization, what did the Wiccan priestess say? What did, I'm just curious. Does anybody know? She, apply, uh, she prayed to Apollo. <laughs> okay, I gotta go. <laughs> Panel, thank you. We'll keep watching it. It goes up November 6th. Uh, well, coming up next.